All right, it is time for some pickups, otherwise known as a book haul. You think after years of talking about books, I would have written a little card that says book haul, but I haven't. I haven't. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I am here today to share with you the books that I bought in March or got. <laughs> some were free, some were cheap, some were full price, some were on sale. It's a mixed bag. It's a total mixed bag of all different kinds of books, all different genres, although there's two that are predominant, two dominant genres here, I think. Um, and I, these are books that I picked up digitally and physically. So, <laughs> physically. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I was inspired by Sarah from Not Just Romance Novels. She recently did a book call of new used digital all the books and I'm like yeah why do we split these things up like they're all books folks and I was like so thank you Sarah for doing that and that totally inspired me to do a book haul in the same fashion so I hope I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> so here are the books that I picked up in the month of March so first up we have oh one that I've read ha <laughs> ha I read it in the same month so exciting it's so rare <laughs> So I picked up All Systems Read by Martha Wells. This is the first in the Murderbot Diaries. It is a novella and it was not it's nominated for the Booktube SFF Awards in the novella category. So I actually just finished this um like right at the end of the month, but I still read it within the month and I didn't quite realize how rare that was. It's okay, I'm not I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna freak out about that. Um, you know, they're the books to enjoy. I will enjoy them over time. It doesn't have to be the same month. But it is exciting that it happened at least once. So yeah, so All Systems Read, I really enjoyed it. I talked about it in my recent Friday Reads, I think. Um, and I look forward to continuing the series. So awesome. Next up, I think is also Booktube SFF. Yes, The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. Chakraborty. I think that's how you say it, Chakraborty. I can't think of another way. Um, this is uh, for a debut novel. The read-along will be happening in May. It is a fantasy series. I don't know too much about it, but I was super excited to go to see that it went on sale because the library hold was really, really long and it was one of the pricier ones in terms of, I think both the digital and physical copies were closer to the, um, like for me when it's a Kindle book and it's like close to $15, I'm kind of like, so it went on sale for more like three and I was like, yes, buy now, buy now. So I got that and I'm looking forward to checking it out in May. Um, I also picked up a physical book for the Booktube SFF Awards and that is Waking Gods by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is the second book in the Themis Files and it is a science fiction book and um, it is in interview format. So I definitely wanted to get it. I find, um, oh, accidentally reading some stuff. So it's in interview format and I find that easier to read in uh, physical form. I'm actually really curious, has anyone read these books on audiobooks? Like, because I wonder if they have separate narrators um, for the different characters. I still think, I've only read the first book so far, but I still think this would be a fabulous film. I don't know how they would do it but it would be amazing. So that is um, the another book two of SFF. Uh, purchase. So that was three. And then we continue in the land of something. Science fiction <laughs> with Revenger by Alistair Reynolds. This is another science fiction novel. You see it's space. There's space there. And um, I actually haven't read anything by Alistair Reynolds. This one came out a couple of years ago. It looks like a lot of fun. Um, and I'm trying to find my feet in science fiction again. I think like I think I have an idea of the kind of science fiction I like. And I'm not sure if that's true. So um, I'm doing some experimentation this year, I think. And um, I didn't actually mean to say that. So, but <laughs> so I actually thought this was um, a standalone, but it's actually the first book in a series. So I'm looking forward to checking that out. And I bought it when it went on sale. Shock, shock. <laughs> Next up we have, oh, Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. This is volume one of the, okay, Ryrie. Ryria, Ryria Revelations. This one, the structure of the books is a bit different because it's volume one and it contains two books. So it's a series, but this is like a bind up of two books, if I'm understanding it correctly. Um, and um, this also went on sale. It is a fantasy series. It follows two friends who were kind of like ousted or betrayed. Um, and so they have to sort of forage 
forage, but go forth on their own. Not forage, like, oh, get some leaves and get some... Anyway. Um, <laughs> um, so they have to, like, they're ousted by the king or something like that, or the kingdom or something, and then they get quite a reputation. Um, and I wasn't sure about this one. Um, I think I heard Anita talk about it. Um, and I, I, it's not that I wasn't sure, it's just... I tend to buy things when they're on sale, if you may or may not have noticed. And so I decided to read the preview to make sure that I would really want to read this, especially because I've bought a lot of fantasy books that I haven't read as much, both digitally and on my unwrapping, like on my TBR shelves. Oh, there's a lot. Anyway, so this one, I started reading it and I already, like, I can see the world, I can remember the world, I can remember the characters, I can remember the situation. I actually got to the end of the preview. I was completely immersed right away. So I was like, well, you know, it was on sale. And I was like, buy now. <laughs> buy now. So I did. I clicked it. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to getting to that one. It probably won't be until June because I'll be doing a lot of the um, BookTube SFF reading until that time. So um, hopefully I will get to it in the summer. So fingers crossed. Let me know if you've read it because I'm really, I'm, I'm really hyped for it. Next up, ah, more. Okay, so the second genre that will be very dominant in this haul, which is romance, and the Rita nominations were announced in late March, so I did some clicking and buying and researching, and one of the titles that I was super excited to get was Take the Lead by Alexis Daria. This is the first book in a duology that's already complete, and it's up for debut novel, and well, as well as one of the contemporaries contemporary categories and it is a romance that is the backdrop like the setting is a reality competition dance show <laughs> I didn't really need to know anything else so I bought it I bought it I also bought Too Wild to Tame by Tanya Burroughs this is part of the Wild Security series this is up for romantic suspense and it's not the first book in the series I'm usually pretty you know strict about reading uh, books in order um, but this one, I think it was, I think it's the woman is a dance instructor. And I think anything that was dance related, I just was like, bye, bye. And one of them I already had. So I went with a bit of a theme this year. And I think she's a dance instructor. And I think what it is, is the, she helps out her across the way neighbor um, is, um, and surly, you know, he's either surly or he doesn't talk a lot, but then he, something happens and he needs her help. So she helps him out. So it looks pretty intense, <laughs> you know, and I, I don't, I'm not quite sure. I'm, I've not had as much luck with romantic suspense recently, but this one appealed to me. So I decided to go for it and I decided just to go for it because this one in particular appealed to me instead of going to the beginning of the series. Usually a lot of um, romance novels that are series, not all, but a lot of them are very tangentially, uh, you know, connected. It's just, I think this one follows a security company. So I would imagine, um, and if you read them, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would imagine that all of the books feature someone who works there. That's usually how a lot of romance series work. So I'm, I'm curious to check this one out. Um, so I hope to read that before the readers, which are, will be announced in July. So fingers crossed. <laughs> Next up, another dance-ish one, Waltzing with the Earl by Catherine Tinley. Um, this one is obviously historical romance. It is a Harlequin historical. And this one I got with my points. Um, there were a couple Harlequins that were, um, well, there were lots of Harlequins that were nominated. And a couple caught my eye, including this one. Uh, it is nominated in the debut category and one of the historical categories as well. I think this one isn't so much about dance as she waltzed with an Earl. Um, <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to checking that one out. And then next up we have the Cowboy Upstairs by Tanya Michaels. This is a Harlequin Western romance. I can't actually remember. I can't remember what category it's nominated for, but it is up for, it's probably one of the contemporaries. Um, is it? I can't remember. Um, and uh, this is another one that I got with my Harlequin rewards points. If you're unfamiliar with the rewards point system, I will leave um, information below. Basically, if you buy Harlequin books, you get points. And in, in turn, you can redeem those points for free books. So it works out. If you are a fan of Harlequin, if you buy them and read them and enjoy them, you can also like answer surveys and stuff on Facebook and stuff. They don't have as many surveys and stuff anymore. I used to be able to get books just by answering the questions. Now I have to, <laughs> and, but now it's like, you know, but you get a, 
it depends on the book, but I find I get a fair amount of points um, when I buy something, even if it's on sale, and uh, it is well more than enough to get uh, get great value out of um, using the reward system. And so those two I picked up with my point. So yay! And also, I think it's important to, not important, I find that if I'm part of a reward system or any kind of system that you might as well use it. Like you might as well get use out of it. So I'm trying to actively make sure that if I have points to to buy, you know, to redeem them with Harlequin or other stuff. Just guys, just guys, just putting that out there. <laughs> okay, I have just no idea what's next. Um, oh, okay, so now we have Within a Captain's Hold by Lisa O. Olek? Olek? Not quite sure. This is the first book in the Captains of the Scarlet Night series, and this is one where a later book in the series is nominated uh, for a read. I'm not sure if it's historical or suspense, I can't remember. Th these are all sort of pirate themed and the one that's nominated is actually um, the woman in the story is a pirate captain or a pirate queen and I'm like yeah! So but this one, um, the, the first book in the series is uh, available for 99 cents so I thought let's start here see if I like the writing style this kind of stuff. It's kind of like in the within the captain's hold like I don't know like I think it's a stowaway um, as opposed to like kidnapping <laughs> so you never know you never know with romance novels anyway i've been a bit of a pirate theme recently not sure why not sure why but it's happening including the next book which is another pirate book and this is in the arms of a pirate by michelle Beatty. um i think this is the second book in the series again with romance novels it doesn't always matter but this one was available for free so i picked it up i don't know if it still is if it is i will leave a link below <clears throat> I have no, sometimes it's, you just never know whether stuff's always free, always on sale. They never put expiries for stuff like that, but this one was free. And I was like, pirate romance, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yay. <laughs> so if you've read it or know anything about it, let me know. Um, it's it's a new author to me, and uh, so I'm looking forward to checking it out. And what else do we have here? Oh, yeah, okay, so, oh, oh, oh my, how to say it. <sighs> Lysistrata, Lysistrata, and it's by oh, Aristophanes. I looked it up. I looked it up. Aristophanes. This is um, an Amazon classic. It just came out. It's public domain. It was written in 400 BC. Um, and um, yeah, and I pre-ordered it for a while back. I pre-ordered a bunch of stuff because I've never pre-ordered things before other than physical books. So I was curious how it worked with the Kindle. So I tested a few of them. And um, yeah, and so this is a classic. I am, I, I can't, I, I'm sorry, I actually, I can't remember anything about it. It might be playful in some way. Don't quote me on that. It was free. And I haven't read any Amazon classics before. It's uh, their, one of their, one of or their line of public domain um, books. Like I often read the Wise House classics, which often start as uh, free and then sometimes they charge for them. I, I, again, never know. I never know how much something's going to be with stuff like that. But with this one, um, yeah, I haven't read an Amazon classic before from their line, so I want to check that out. So, and it was free. <laughs> so, yay! <laughs> and then I actually picked some stuff up at the library. I went to, um, like my local library and they often have a cart at the front and I decided to pick up some books there and the ones that I picked up are first up I picked up Silk Swords and Surrender by Jeannie Lin and this is actually a collection of short stories set in the Tang Dynasty which sounds really awesome and I was actually interested about this before because I actually did check it out on one of my library halls last year or the year before, but I didn't end up reading it, so now I can take as long as I need <laughs> to read it. Um, I also picked up um, Black and Blue, James Patterson with Candace Fox. This is one of the James Patterson book shots. I was curious about these. I had seen them electronically, like on Overdrive, through the library, but I wasn't sure, like, they're supposed to be... Uh, Lightning fast stories, novels you can devour in a few hours, impossible to stop reading. And they have extremely short chapters, like one page, two pages. And, um, you know, it's a smaller format. Okay. And um, 
this is like 150 pages so I'm curious as to what it will read like and I was hoping to get it in for March Mystery Madness but as it is now April that didn't happen. but I'm looking forward to checking it out and then the last thing that I got is and I'm not gonna know how to pronounce this it's um XXXholic by Plamp and this is a manga and um it is in really rough condition like really you can see you can see through it um but I thought it would be fun that's not that's, that's from the back so it goes this way um I thought it'd be fun to read I haven't read a manga before and um and then I also probably will use it as some art inspiration some of my art projects I want to like you know try like for example like try to do these portraits in a realistic style or try and do portraits from a photograph in a manga style. I think that would be a fun exploration and just to see some of the different techniques, stuff like that. Oh, that looks awesome. Okay, that's getting close to the end. Won't do that. Um, and then last but not least, I picked up at a little library, I picked up Carol Shields's Larry's Party, which is a Canadian book. It also won the Orange Prize back in 98. And um, yeah, and so that was that. There was a library, a little free library, and I didn't even, I found a new one. I found a new one nearby-ish. And so I picked that up. So I look forward to reading that um, because my sister Susie speaks very highly of it. So that is my very long haul. Like, woo, that was a lot. That was a lot of books. That was a lot of books and um, these are not in the right formation and a bunch of them are digital. So there are the physical books and I picked up a whack ton of digital books. I think it's going to be really fun. There's a lot of these actually actively planned on reading within like a particular window. I'm not, I don't get too hard on myself if like if I don't read like you know I don't buy them to not read them. <laughs> I buy them for choice. I buy them for choice and I buy a lot of stuff on sale. So anyway let me know, did any of these catch your eye? Um, what, do you get caught by sales? I, I guess I obviously do. But these ones, like the, well, this one was free because it's a little free library. I went back and put something in it or had my sister put something in it. And um, and these one were a dollar, which I was surprised at. I thought, especially the Harlequin, I thought it would be less than a dollar um, on from the cart at the library. At bookends, it would be less, but you know, still, it's a dollar, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay that. So I got it from my change purse, so. I don't worry about anything that I can pay from my change purse, like, ever. <laughs> so, that's where the mad money is. Um, just as in don't allocate, not, like, lots. Anyway, now I'm rambling. That's my haul. It's really long. Sorry it was long. There were a lot of books. Let me know what you're reading. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.